I'm Frank Milner. Welcome to this exciting video presentation, The Power of Pink and White. Pink composites and white composites, what a wonderful marriage that is. You know, that reminds me of a couple quotes by Vincent van Gogh, who said, I'm always doing what I can't do yet in order to learn how to do it. I'm always evolving myself, trying to find out how I can improve and bring high quality services to my patients. You know, Devan said that our goal should be the preservation of what remains versus the meticulous restoration that is missing. What my philosophy is today is minimally invasive, bioemulation, biointeractive, reservoir fillings, all these things are important to me. That's why I've devoted two years to co-develop these products, the pink composites, from Shofu that will be a wonderful addition into your practice line to address these concerns. And white composites called value enamels that can let you rival nature and create natural aesthetics. These products are gonna represent opportunities in your dental practice. What I wanna do is give you practical illustrations, practical techniques, and tips that you can take home and bring them into your offices. The goal is to let you evolve, let you become more artistic and creative with more experience. Chofu and I have developed five different colors of pink composites. The beautiful two gingiva. And these have great light transmission. They have great physical properties. They come in light pink, dark pink, orange, brown, and violet for different ethnicities in the population today. And what's also interesting with the same flowable gymers, they have a pink flowable material. I'm gonna show you how to put that in the preparation itself. Let's talk about gymer chemistry. One of the greatest challenges we have as clinicians today is to go subgingival with our porcelains and our composites. What makes this very special, when you look at Shofu's gymer chemistry, it's almost like a glass ionomer. It has a surface pre-reacted glass core that's been pre-reacted with polyacrylic acid. There's nothing else in the profession that has this. This is proprietary. This is what is really indicated today, especially for the pink composite line, but it's in every product line that Shofu has, whether it's packable, whether it's flowable, whether it's bulk filled, whether it's pink or white, you can rely on the gymer chemistry. If you look at what's in this, especially in the gymer, pink and white, two ions, five total, fluoride and strontium. Anybody who knows glass ionomer chemistry knows that the fluoride strontium equation is very important. I know it has superb handling. It has chameleon effects, the ability of the material to pick up the color of the environment. That's what a chameleon effect does. It also has wonderful shade uh, blending characterizations. It's easy to handle, it's not sticky. It doesn't have that ability to resist what I wanna do. In the pink part, I've co-developed the pink burr block here. And this is all dedicated to doing pink composites. I have two inverted cone burrs, one large, one small. We have a marginator, which is a, a very fine yellow flame diamond, and then inverted cone diamonds as well, one large, one small. If you look at the five different colors too, especially violet for different ethnicities, you can custom color make these just like paint. You can mix and match some of light pink with dark pink. You can mix and match brown with light pink, so on and so forth. So you have at least 15 to 20 possibilities of pink. This workshop module is into three different places on each tooth. So what I've done was create a module of teeth six, seven, and eight. Each has gingival recession. I developed this typodont. When you look about customizing these gingival shades, this is the same thing your ceramist has with ceramage and other gingival colored porcelains. Not everyone fits 
in the category of five different shaded gingival restorations. This being light pink, this being dark pink, this being orange pink, this being brown pink, this being violet. So if you were going to make a sulcus, you could have a violet sulcus. This creates a different look right here. If you create a free gingival margin, you can kind of get real creative and put these on, right on the root surface and kind of shape them up a little bit and to see how it is to create custom shades. But you can mix and match any of these shades to create a secondary color range in here. This is gonna be your chalk line. This is gonna be your guardian that you're gonna confine anything with a handpiece inside these boundaries. So as you know, the, the contour of the anatomical crown is curved. It's a semicircle. And if you cut something straight across the gingival margin, that, doesn't, that violates na uh, nature's principles. So what you want to do is extend a number two big pencil out like this. And then with one simple swipe, you just draw the curve, anatomical curve of the tooth. Nice fine line. Then you can start your preparations. What we want to do now is pick the pear-shaped diamond that configures into the width of the space. The first one, we always do the least amount of damage first, so it doesn't hurt to pick out the small one. We're going to do number six first. So you can see right here, the pear shape is the smallest one. And you just want to go right in the mesial distal lines and just start identifying the margins. Very carefully, you want to take your pear diamond and follow the lines. So the next one is to pick the inverted cone after the pear diamond and then with a very firm hand rest and very delicate is take your inverted cone and just go through all the lines, mesial, gingival, distal, and then with a very nice swipe, just follow the curvature of the root. You can see my hands, every place it goes, I come right back. You'll see this over and over in the way I practice dentistry. It's almost like I'm on a robotic lathe, so to speak, and then follow the curvature. When you look at the final preparations on six, seven, and eight, it makes no difference if you're putting the sulcus in there or if you're not putting the sulcus in there. It's got the same properties, the same boundary identification, the same curve to the anatomical crown. And then you're gonna see the accuracy that I can start building these pink composite restorations. Let's talk about adhesion. Should you use acid etching? When you could, you could be doing selective etching. So if you have enamel, what you want to do is run a, a small bead of phosphoric acid right on that cervical portion of the hydroxyapatite right there. That's called selective etching. Now on your bonding, I'm going to recommend you use a seventh generation uh, Denton bonding agent. This is Beauty Bond by Shofu. A unidose is a good place to start right here. Just twist it open. Now, your choice is going to be two parts for placing the Denton bonding agent, the Beauty Bond. You either can incorporate a micro brush or a bend brush. This is really important how much liquid you put on these. The volume estimate is going to be done with a micro brush. What I have is a moistened micro brush. These are the preparations. When you paint using a micro brush or bend a brush, what you want to do is very specifically moisten the preparations. This is acetone base, so you know it's very volatile. It's going to evaporate the carriers. One coat with a micro brush, five micron film thickness, 
pH of 2.5, HEMA free. These are all good things for me. Now, I can take a Benda brush. I just want to moisten the Benda brush and then on a clean nitrile glove, I just want to wipe any excessive Denton bonding agent out. All I want is a moistened brush. Why do you need this? Because if you've, you're a painter, I've done painting, is that you need some place to get into the micro crevices now. And with the Benda brush, what you can do is swipe subgingivally in a very predictable circular motion and just pick up any of the debris that might be lurking in the proximals, the mesial and distal, and just pull it and just make sure you don't have any uh, extra film thickness down there. You can air dry this. You usually start out right about here at about, oh, 18 inches and go steady slowly, 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 slowly and let the acetone evaporate until you see a shiny uniform surface. That means you're done air drying. Then you inspect before you light care and you make sure that you don't see any extra residue, any sort of debris when you're doing pink composites is a deterrent for bio-integration, bio-lamination, and the biological effect that it has on the tissue. Adhesion is the most important layer you're gonna put in any preparation in dentistry today. What instruments do you need to do pink composites in your, in your operatories today? Well, it's gonna be really simple. First one is a ball burnisher by Eufridi. I transfer material in spherical increments, especially on the pink composites. We'll take this some regular gymer here, a beautiful two material. On a clean glove, you roll the material into a sphere and put it on top of the ball burnisher. We have a small end and we have a larger end. Because when you do that, when you place a material, a spherical volume on the tooth and you can spread it, it's spherical, it takes, takes less surface energy to spread it without any inherent cuts in the material or irregularities or air inclusions. So you're gonna see the ball burnisher. That's number one. Number two, a long bladed IPC. Once you get into the minuteness, the real tight preparation margins, you're gonna need an instrument with a long blade so you can see that go down and, and actually touch and integrate the material. So long bladed IPCs. Okay, the, the next one is a instrument from Eufridi. This is the Goldstein micro placement in, uh, instrument right here because you're gonna see me put some pink flowable material into the box. I need something to incorporate that and move the material as I see fit. Let's do the pink flowable. So what I'm gonna do is put the very carefully, express a little bit out the cannula and then put the cannula in the box Never lift up the cannula inside the preparation because then it's going to pull away from you. We do number seven. This initiates the pink color. Now, once you do that, you take the micro instrument and massage and put that material wherever you want. Keep it in the box, keep it in the preparation. Wipe it off with your glove. Go on to the next one, make sure it's all wetted. Go on to the next one. Very steady hand, back and forth. Don't remove the tip of the instrument out of the preparation. Now, once the uh, pink flowable composite is in, then you can light care five to 10 seconds. Remember, this is a very thin layer. These are the preparations. This is the adhesion. These are the guiding principles that we're using for the pink composites. This is the adhesion. Now we're ready to go. So the first one is going to be a light pink material with no sulcus. 
So what we want to do first is take a little bit of light pink on the IPC carver, the long blade. See how the beautiful part of that long blade is you can visualize that. These are going to be two spherical increments that are going to be triangulated not touching each other, and then the last layer is going to connect the two. Take the first layer and introduce it into the tooth. See, this is the beautiful part right here. Now, with the ball burnisher, what I can do first is just very carefully with the ball burnisher, very artistically, very precisely, tack that material inside the boundaries of the preparation. A little bit thicker up at the cervical margin, so it's inside the inverted cone burr preps. That's all you need is the ball burnisher at this point. Tack it down, oh, maybe halfway, three quarters of the way. That's your first increment. So if we take the first layer, like here for five seconds, maybe 10. Now, the second, the second layer, the same thing, syringe of light pink, fresh increment, roll it up in your fingers, small end of the ball burnisher. This time, this is the most important part, we're gonna put it in the gingival part of the tooth. You can just see how I'm actually very carefully pushing that spherical in increment into the inferior part of the preparation without any irregularities on that. I can't tell you how important this is, is I'm putting another triangular increment and merging it into the other inverted triangular increment. And then you like here five to 10 seconds. So we have triangulation, triangulation, and now we're going to close the triangle up on the top. Now, I will keep some convexity. The mark of somebody that understands this is they don't create flat root contours. If you create a flat root contour, the epithelial, the gingival attachment that surrounds this has nothing to rest against. It doesn't like flat. It will create a knife edge. You want round contours. Again, a estimate, try to be a good estimator on volume. Now, that's my final volume. That looks better to me. So now, what I can do again, just with the ball burnisher, is tease this material right here. There's no irregularities. This is where you use the long bladed IPC. Because when you have the long bladed IPC, if you like flat root contours, then you would just take your IPC and push it down. I don't like flat root contours. So what I'm going to do is raise the elevation of the IPC, maybe about 30 degrees, and make sure that I have bio-integration right there. I want to make sure that I have sulcus sealing right here. And I just take that IPC and I just move it right up. I'm integrated into the tissue. No irregularities, no air voids. So then we're going to light cure that. Light pink, no sulcus. That's number one is light pink. And we'll go over finishing and polishing in just a second. Okay, let's go to workshop number two. This is the orange pink. We've already placed the gingival flowable composite is the underlayment in construction. This is the foundation that you're going to build off of. Then on the orange pink once again, so again the first increment is the gingival increment. Place it in the tooth. Take your long bladed IPC. The reason I like the gymers and the beautiful two line for any of their consistencies is there's no stickiness, there's no pullback. So you don't need that. So again, a very gentle hand here. What you want to do is get the superior margin in place. You're packing it into 
the undercut, the micro undercut with the inverted cone burr. We're going to put a sulcus on this one, but you can see I take the long bladed IPC and I'm not cutting because when you cut, you're pulling that material over. It's going to come with it and you have to go back and redo it again. So on this one, I take the IPC cart, long bladed IPC, and I'm just tacking it into the superior margin right there. And now with the bulb burnisher, I can just pull it down, get it into the sides of the preps, no debris, no excesses, and just make sure that that is integrated into the inferior margin, the gingival margin, that there are no gaps. That's a great place for bacteria to hide out, and if you don't have the gymer chemistry, I'm telling you this is the perfect marriage. The gymer chemistry into the subgingival restorations, the pink gingiva restorations is a match for the gymer chemistry. Steady hand, lake care. Next increment is the inverted wedge. Again, this wedge is going down this way from the anatomical crown. It goes here to the inferior border of the preparation. You integrate it in to the swale right here. The next increment is going to be the cervical increment, the gingival increment that goes this way, and they meet this way. And the last increment is going to be up above, and that's the one that causes the less stress. So. Let's take our second increment. Can you see how well that behaves? That material is just perfect. The consistency, the handling, everything is just right. So now, with the ball burnisher, the small end, I'm just placing into the boundaries of the preparation. Very delicate movements with the hand. Lake care. Next is sulcus development. For many of you, you probably haven't had a chance to do this. I evolved my own skills based on uh, uh, working with ceramists and how they have different designs and variations of color and surface texture. So what I did is figure this one out very quickly on how to do the sulcus. This is the virtual sulcus on top of an anatomical sulcus. So once again, what you want to do is overlay the last layer, remember, first triangle comes down this way, second triangle comes this way, third triangle comes up this way, and now we're going to create a little sulcus going this way. Let's take up the long bladed IPC. Now this way, what you're going to do is create your sulcus. You follow that curve with the long bladed IPC, and if you think that the sulcus is flat, it's not that way. Nature didn't make it that way. So what you do is tease this back just a little bit, follow the curvature of the root. Now, that it gives you some identification of the sulcus. And you can take the long bladed IPC, make sure your margins are integrated. You see, this is so delicate. Now, if you want, you back, go back to your ball burnisher and just make sure that you haven't put a big cut underneath this and just identify the sulcus. Like here. This is an easy one. You take the gum colored gymer flowable right here and you can either take the cannula and just place it right onto the tooth and express a little bit of gum colored flowable. Now, you can either take the Goldstein micro application instrument right here and just, it just self levels. It's so easy to do. You can do it that way. That's number one. Number two, you can take a micro brush and tap it. It's filled in. Number three, you can take a Benda brush and paint. You paint from the gingival to the incisal 
in itself levels, you can do that. Number two is sealing the sulcus. On this sulcus, this lip that you're creating, if you create it too acute, remember, this sulcus does not erupt out of the gum tissue and it's like a tsunami of pink. It's a very gradual uh, elevation. You can take the milky flowable, express a little bit of the milky flowable in the sulcus. You can take the micro instrument and just run that bead back and forth. Don't take the cannula out or the instrument tip out. Just take that and run that bead right at that free gingival margin. And then you light cure this. Now you just have a place where a patient can take a toothbrush and, and scrub that and clean it and it won't discolor. So, that is repairing and sealing the sulcus. Workshop number three, gingival recession using dark pink, three color variations, and you can mix and match too. You can get custom colors. And I'm gonna take my first increment of dark pink composite. This time I'm gonna turn the ball burnisher around and I'm gonna put it on top of the large sphere. Put it right in the tooth. You know how this goes? Triangle going down this way. Nothing up higher than the height of contour. We're just taking and scribing it down and keeping the elevation the same as the natural contour of the tooth. Now I can turn off over the ball burnisher. Again, I can't tell you how nice this material behaves. It handles like a dream. Tease that material down in here to the inferior border of your preparation. This is the most important part. You got the flowable underneath. Now your first increment is just going to touch the inferior border of the preparation. This was the easy one. The next one is the hard one. That's where you put the gingival triangle going on this way. And that's the one where you bio-integrate that material into the sulcus. I put it right at the center height of where the bisecting line goes right through the root. I start there. I know it's got the right emergence profile with no excesses on there. This is the triangle going backwards. This is not the final curvature and contour. It has an emergence profile from the inferior border of the preparation coming up this way and now it's gonna come up this way and we create the final contour up above. That is layer number two. How long did that take me? That takes me about as long as the adhesion layer takes. The adhesion layer is simplistic. However, it's the most important layer that you don't create any adhesive debris. Number three, sulcus development. I'm just gonna tease this material up here. Mesial distal, I'll pull it down a little bit no imperfections, put this down. Once again, the IPC and what you're doing is going right into the sulcus, half this way, half this way, no excess, no residue. For sulcus development and sulcus creation, you can take the IPC this way. And again, to based on the free gingival margin, this one we can probably be a little more generous with just for variation, you can take the IPC carver and actually start creating your boundaries for the free gingival margin and follow the curvature of the root. Go back to your ball burnisher, you tap and move the free gingival margin up and tease. The last one is tease this way. 
go back to your blade. Make sure you didn't leave any residue. Swipe it out. That's sulcus development. My advice is don't start with the sulcus. It's too complex. Like natural aesthetics, we want to start you in basic building and then bring you into the intermediate zone where you've incorporated some of the, the important principles underneath and then take it up to the higher level. Get some experience and take that one up to the higher level. And I'm, I will tell you this, that your practice will grow when you introduce pink into your practice because most dentists don't know it exists. They don't know how to use it. It is indeed a practice builder.